Hey everyone, welcome back to Rose's Year of One. It's so strange that's actually the first time I've said that intro, um, even though you will obviously have seen a video by now introducing my year of one and what my whole project is this year. This is actually the first video that I'm filming for it because it's my Project 10 Pan intro for my Project 10 Pan for the year. So yeah, that's the first time I've ever actually said welcome to Rose's year of one. And as far as this video is concerned, welcome to Rose's creaky floor. I'm so sorry, I will find a new spot to film in. So the year of one is about me trying to control the quantity of things that I am bringing in and that I own and that I have to you know mentally and physically deal with basically. So as well as stopping the flow of that coming in I also still have my makeup rehab plans for this year which you'll have seen a video about and although there are things that I move through naturally because I feel like if I don't make an effort with certain categories of makeup um, I never use them up so I wanted to do a project 10 pan this year and um, the general theme of it is pretty much stuff that I want to be moving out of my collection so there's quite a lot of things in it that I'm aiming to actually finish. Without any further ado let's just get into the items that I have chosen for this project. The first one is a primer. I had planned to use up a lot more primer last year than I ended up using up. So 2020 obviously was the year of the global pandemic. It's 2021 and it's Scotland is in lockdown for the whole of January anyway so it's not like 2021 has magically arrived and we're all moving on but at least it's not a new thing and we don't have to adjust to it in the same way this year kind of thing. So I'm hoping that between that and you know the vaccine being rolled out that the the sort of mental stress of living in a global pandemic will go down this year um, and basically I'm hoping to be wearing more makeup. I weighed this so in terms of like looking at it you can currently see it's kind of about half full. I weighed it and there's 27 grams of product well, it's 27 grams, including the packaging, so it's not 27 grams of product, but it's 27 grams. So I want to finish this up, and this is going to be a rolling category. So when I finish this primer up, I will roll in another primer into the project. Not every category is a rolling category, but quite a few of them are, or from the get-go I'm putting in more than one item within the category. So although it's a Project 10 pan, hopefully by the end of the year, it'll be well more than 10 items that are used up as a result of it. Item number one, and I didn't even say what it was, it's from the Abnormal Beauty Company. It's the Hyalamide HA Blur Hyaluronic Based Prismatic Blurring Surface Finisher, which I use as a primer. So that is the first item in my project. The second item in my project is this blush. I feel like I'm the last person um, who actually still has this because I feel like most people who got this blush and um, have panned it. It was the Sephora birthday gift a few years ago now um, and it is the Tarte blush in Party. It's the mini one and um, so that is what it looks like. So I had already been attempting to hit pan in this previously which I never quite managed but you can see in the middle like there's a good dip going on in it. However around the edges like you can still see the full imprint of the original pattern etc so there's still quite a lot of product in here but I am hoping to actually finish this completely this year. I've got two blushes in this project, this is the first one. Because of that neither of those items are going to be rolling because I feel like between finishing up two of them and still trying to rotate through the rest of my collection it's just not going to be possible to move through them quickly enough to make it worthwhile rolling in another one if that makes sense. Particularly this one, I want to pan it partly because I feel like I'm the last person who still has it um, but lastly because I actually really like this blush so it's what I've got on today but for Christmas I asked for the Clinique Clinique did a little palette, I think it was, I think it's called the Warm Up Palette or the Warm Pops Palette, it's Warm Something Palette and um, it's got three of their cheek pops in it and one of the ones that is in it is Nude Pop which I've been after for absolutely ages but I feel like Nude Pop 
is the blush I'm going to reach for where I would usually have used this so I feel like it's quite a neutral blush so if you've got a strong eye and a strong lip or the likes of this um, look which is obviously quite eyeliner heavy and then a sort of nude lip I feel like this blush just kind of goes with everything in a way and I feel like nude pop is going to be the same and obviously that is new and I want to get the use out of it in my collection so I don't want to have two blushes that I would be reaching for for the same reason all the time so I just want to try and concentrate on this one and get it used up so that I can use nude pop and not kind of have just basically to have one blush for that purpose rather than two because the year of one is all about reducing the quantity and the second blush so the third item the second blush is from my hourglass ambient lighting volume 3 palette follow me on my makeup rehab instagram which is at rose keats makeup rehab i did have this highlight and not that you can tell but also this bronzer in a project last year that I ran over on my Makeup Rehab Instagram account and then I've also finished up Diffuse Light so I'm hoping to finish up this highlight as well because I'm putting this palette or items from this palette into this project so I'm hoping to finish the highlight over the course of the year and um, but the blush that I want to finish from this palette this year is this pink one. It was damaged, I dropped it when I literally only just got it so it's been damaged for ages but I have been using it it's about half used I would say and the use of it is not all from it being broken a chunk of it broke off and then I have been sort of subconsciously trying to use it up because I feel like once something breaks a little bit it's instantly more fragile so I do want to try and use it up so that is the second blush that I'm putting in this project and the fourth item is the dim light powder I'm aiming to finish both of these within the project as two of my items. I'm basically hoping in 2022 to finish the other two items so we shall see. I don't, I didn't for a minute think I was going to finish three blushes, a powder um, and this bronzer particularly because I had this bronzer in a, in a project last year and didn't even hit pan on it. I'm a very pale person, this is quite an orangey bronzer so I've got quite a small portion of the year where I can get away with this. Dim light's actually a bronzer on me, so yeah. Not expecting to use up these two this year, but hoping to finish these two and not as part of the project, but to finish this highlight so that in 2022 I can get through the rest of it and actually be able to see a panda palette. That is the long term goal, but yeah, so the pink blush and dim light are in this year's project 10 pan. I do have a highlight in this project as well, the Benefit Dandelion Twinkle highlight. I have no pan in this, I have used it, it's not a brand new product in my collection um, but it's not seen a lot of use so it's, it's not far off being a brand new product either. So that is what that one looks like. I do really like it, I think it's a very very pretty highlight um, and I feel like it's one that you can really kind of build up if you want something more intense but you can sheet out as well so I feel like I can use it for work and things hopefully because you know we will hopefully be back to the office at some point this year so yeah I'm hoping to hit pan in this I'm not going to aim to finish it but just to hit pan on it would be good and then if I do achieve that quite early in the project you know we'll see if I can finish it but I do still want to rotate through my other things I don't see the point in using something till it's finished when it's basically new because I've got so many others that I also want to be getting use out of um, but I would like to make some progress in this and hit pan and the palette that I put in every project I want to pan a shade from Modern Renaissance so I just want to hit pan on the shade I'm not aiming to finish an eyeshadow from this but if you look at this palette so my very first ever project pan Tempera was in there and I hit pan on it as part of that project and I've now pretty much panned the shade there's just a tiny bit around the outside and then Primavera went into my second project pan that I ever did and I hit pan on it and then Vermeer was in last year's project pan and I hit pan on it um, so I feel like it's now just like a thing that every project I do I need to put in a shade from this. I feel like I still have too much stuff 
that the idea of doing like pan that palette is too overwhelming um but I'm kind of low-key working towards panning this palette I mean it would take me in theory like so how many shades are in this one two three four five six seven so there's 14 shades so it would take me like 14 projects um at the rate of a shade per project but I would I would quite like to do it at some point but anyway another shade to be added to the list of shades in this palette that have a pan in them um, and I haven't picked the shade yet so what I'm going to do is just do it on camera with you I'm going to number them so the ones that have a pan in already obviously don't count so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and I'm going to put numbers one to eleven into a random number generator and we're going to see what what shade I get. Could be a very very dangerous way of doing this. Okay, so you can see that shade number ten has been picked. So shade number ten is warm taupe. I'm quite relieved actually because if that had come out as like love letter of Venetian red, I might have been panicking. I feel like warm taupe is one that I can probably hit pan on, it's one that I can use at work and things. So yeah, I feel like that is one that I will be able to hit my goal on. I still want to be rotating through all of my other palettes, so I don't know how quickly I will hit my goal in this. If I do hit it less than halfway through the project, I will pick another shade from this palette to try and hit pan on. Um, but it did take me like basically the whole year to hit pan on Vermeer last year. Um, just because I have so much eyeshadow so trying to both hit pan on something and rotate through and give other things use is it's a balancing act um, so I don't I don't foresee me hitting pan on this too quickly I mean there's like there's no dip or anything in that to even start with so yeah we shall see but warm taupe from the modern renaissance palette and item number seven is another eyeshadow and again if not picked it yet we're going to randomly generate it and it's from this palette which is the Morphe 18B Making Bank. This palette was a gift from my friend Lauren. Lauren got me this palette because she saw it on Instagram and was like that is Roisin in a palette and it is. If I could curate my own palette this is pretty much exactly how it would come out to the point that if you look at this this is my Z palette that I have like collected either shadows that I bought individually or that I've saved from palettes that I've been decluttering. This is basically the exact same colour story that is starting in my own curated palette as is in this palette and even likes of like there's a yellow in this palette and I literally just decluttered my yellow MAC single shadow because the yellow in this palette is better. This basically would be what my own curated palette would look like. Off the back of that I've been in makeup rehab for 2018, 2019, 2020 so going into my fourth year of makeup rehab I feel like I've got to a point where I can look at a palette and I can identify what shade it is I really like in the palette um, and I can quite successfully sort of talk myself out of buying palettes or wanting palettes. I've kind of over my no buys I have managed that skill. So I'm not too worried that I'm going to fall into the trap of using my one item each month to bring a new makeup palette into my life. I don't foresee that being a thing. However, I feel like, and this is the downfall of that like one item scenario, is that I feel like I'm, I'm quite vulnerable to being drawn in by a single shadow and giving myself that narrative in my head of being like, this will be my one single shadow and this will be my perfect blue or my perfect green or my perfect duochrome or whatever it is in a way that I can walk away from palettes when I feel like it's this one really individual special thing that I really want and it's not about the packaging and it's not about you know obtaining 12 shadows to sit nicely in a palette and I know that it is just that one I feel like that's something I'm a bit more vulnerable to being talked into or talking myself into or being less able to talk myself out of is maybe the way to phrase it but basically I'm hoping that by having this palette in the project and by looking at this palette often I will be able to talk myself out of 
any single eyeshadows that come along because they generally would be part of this colour story. You know, I know the shades that I'm very attracted to, I know the shades that I'm drawn in by, and they're all kind of represented in this palette, like it's so me, that I feel like hopefully by having this in the project and looking at it regularly, um, any single eyeshadows that come along and take me fancy will be ousted by being like, yeah, but I know that I own that in this palette. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Let's get on with picking the shade. So there are 18 in this. So again, we'll number them like along the rows. So like one to six, seven to 12, 13 to 18. I feel like I've got quite lucky with warm top in the other palette. So probably not gonna be so lucky with this. And oh, right, okay. So if you guys can see, we get number six, which is this greeny shade here. So I really love greens. I tend to be very, very attracted to greens. Okay, fitting pan and a green eyeshadow. Although I think, in fact, let's just swatch these just now. Uh, number six is, name-wise, it's called C Note. So that is what it looks like. It's a really sort of beautiful matte. I really like that it's matte. I feel like that makes it easier for me to pan deep, almost like yellowish green, like a quite khaki green. And then I'll swatch warm top next to it. Okay, like, do you know what? Like looking at them, looking at these, they actually go reasonably well together. So this is C Note from the Morphe Making Bank palette and then warm top from Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. So actually I feel like I can probably wear them together which is good. I'm just gonna go wipe my hand and be right back with you for the next item. But item number eight is going to be my lipstick category and this is one of the ones that has, it has two items in it as the category item if that makes sense um, and you will see why. So the first one is actually from my first ever project pan, it's a revisit, the MAC Viva Glam lipstick from Cindy Lauper. So that is what that one looks like. It's so little that's left in it that I feel like if I don't put it in a project, it's going to kick around for another few years. But if I make the effort to put it in a project and say I want to use it up, that I will actually be able to use it up within this project. So that is my aim is to finish this completely. And then the second item, which I also want to finish up, is the lipstick that I'm wearing um, at the moment. And it's from Tarte and it's the birthday suit lip paint and it's actually the other item that came from the Sephora birthday gift. So this was the Sephora birthday gift um, a couple of years ago. It's the Tarte Party Blush and Birthday Suit Liquid Lipstick. But I've only used this a handful of times so it's basically full even though it's a mini. So those two together are my lipstick item that I am aiming to finish as part of my Project 10 pan this year. and. The next category is lip liner and you might laugh at this because it's so tiny that it feels almost silly to be putting it in a project pan but it is this Sephora lip liner so it doesn't have a shade name on it, it's just basically a red one and um, it may have had a shade name on it and I've used it and sharpened it down past it. So so tiny, I do want to like finish it obviously with pencils, you can only sharpen them until you physically can't fit them in the sharpener kind of thing um, but that is how that I want to use that to that point. I have kept this for so long saying oh but I'll pan that because it's so small I just need to pan it and get it moved out so that I can use my full size lip liners. Well this was full size at one point but obviously it's not anymore. If I do finish this within the project I might roll in another lip liner in its place however I feel like between having this is a pink lipstick, a nude lipstick and a red lip liner, that's three days a week that I've already sort of assigned my lipstick colour and I still want to be working through all my other lipsticks are up there if you guys can see that. I have 150, I've not done my official inventory yet for 2021. I feel like I will do it though and it'll probably be up before this video is, so you will probably know. But I think it's around the 150 mark of bullet lipsticks and then liquid lipsticks are on top of that. So I feel like in terms of trying to rotate through and finish up three different colours within my project pan, I don't actually think I'm gonna finish this 
and move on to something else successfully within the project so yeah that's what we're starting with if I do finish it up really quickly I'll roll in something else um, but otherwise I just want to try and actually use this up and get it out of my life the last item or the last category of my 10 I feel like calling it a project 10 pan is probably not right it's kind of the project 10 categories um, but the last category is lip gloss and it's a kind of similar situation I've got four items that are counting within this and I'm hoping to roll through all four of them completely finish all four of them by the end of the project the first three are all from Stila and it's these ones which you'll probably have a good laugh at when I show you in the cutaway like or even like if I just come up here and you can see how little is actually in these three you're probably like are you for real like putting these in a project but these three I said kind of unofficially not in a project pan sense that I wanted to finish last year and they're still sitting here this year they have kicked about with so little product in them for a whole year because if I don't put things in a project and say like I officially need to use this up and I need to report back and give updates on it I just kind of forget about them and um, so these three are going in and I'm basically hoping that within like I basically want to use one a month for the first three months of this project for these three the the goal is to finish those three completely and also to finish up this this is from Estee Lauder and it is their Garnet Desire lip gloss and it's I have used it I can kind of see little areas where it's sort of thinning out that suggests it's not completely full but I'm just not really a lip gloss person it's not I mean that's why those three have kicked about for like a whole year because I very rarely reach for lip gloss so I do want to just try and get some of the ones that I've got moved out I do have some that I'm keeping because I do really like them and I don't dislike these and um, obviously if I really didn't like them I would have just decluttered them but I would like to get them used up and moved out of my collection I feel like being able to reduce my quantity even though these are not for new full-size lip glosses so like you and I will know that it wasn't that much of an achievement to use four lip glosses but I feel like just being able to move four lip glosses out of my stash and reduce that by a quantity of four but also like I don't know what these are worth individually um, but I imagine they're probably the best part of like $20 each in terms of the value so I feel like using up four lip glosses will give me probably like the best part of $80 towards my reverse rouge this year so yeah I am putting these four in the project and I want them all gone. I want to pan all four of them by the end. So that was my last category. Those are all 10 categories of my Project 10 pan for 2021. I am not the best panner in the world. Um, I've had very much varying degrees of success with project panning in the past, but I feel like if I don't officially do it, I don't finish anything. And even if I don't finish things within the projects, the likes of, you know, this highlighter, for example, that was in last year's project, it's now so nearly finished that I'll probably finish it this year just naturally. So I feel like it's still so worthwhile for me to do project pans, even though I am giving you the full upfront disclaimer that I am not the best planner in the world. These are probably like, probably my updates are not going to be the most exciting updates um you know i'm not going to be finishing an item every month i'm not going to be rolling new items in like every two months or whatever like i, I watch some people who are phenomenal project planners um and that's it's really just not me so full disclaimer don't expect me to be coming back in like a month's time with patterns and everything I'm not that kind of person but I still think they're really worthwhile for me to do so I don't know if I'm going to update every month or every two months I'll basically I'll just kind of see when it's worth doing an update I do feel like it's maybe like every six weeks might be kind of the right kind of balance to hit so that I'm still giving updates and I'm still focused on the project and um, but that should hopefully be enough time for me to actually make progress on the items because I feel like four weeks just is never quite enough for me to see good enough progress to make it feel worth doing an update 
Um, so yeah, I feel like we'll go for every six weeks as the updates on this. Um, but thank you very much for watching the intro. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you're project planning this year and if you are doing it on YouTube or Instagram, please leave me your links down below so that I can come and check them out. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.